Okay, so I'm here at 35 meters shooting indoors at this target because I was going to shoot outdoors but it's been windy and I was like how am I going to do this shoot because it's been really windy and I was like well I've got this indoor shooting range right so so let's try this out so I've set up this um, drive with this stabilizer this site um, now I'm just I've set the sights kind of so if you can kind of see this site here is 10 and I'm hoping this one's around the 30 odd so there's a it's a pretty tight gap between them just there um, the drop away rest $50 now I really like the drive it it aims easy um, I fit a basic peep to it and we're just going to see how we shoot now I've been rip, ripping down some steel this morning here um, so we'll see how it goes no excuses Now, one thing I noticed at longer distances, I can see a little bit of this happening. Now, I didn't see that at 18 meters, where it's clear to me now I'm getting a little bit of this, which is where more weight on the stabilizer would help me. So, when you think about stuff, when you think about, you know, stabilizing your bow, I didn't see any of this before. I'm seeing it now at the longer distances. So. kind of surreal shooting 35 meters indoors and I'm like if I shoot back in the office I can get 50 <laughs> I kind of feel like doing it but now one thing with these pins I haven't got the light turned on um, I'm aiming with the orange pin. The orange pin doesn't stand out as well on the orange target there. So um, I haven't got a spotlight on the target, but it seems it seems pretty good. Like this in the high light, it's not high. It's not like shooting outdoors, indoors. It's not as bright, but it's still perfectly fine. Now one of my customers was asking about the drive, this, the drive versus the NXT like 33, is it worth spending the money? Now this is up to you. They both have this yoke system. I'm gonna say the drive cams are probably a bit more advanced. Um, probably a bit better riser, um, machine limb pockets, but it's an extra $500. So, but this bow feels Honestly, it feels great to shoot. And I feel like I say that in a lot of reviews, but this feels really, really nice. It's... Literally, I cannot think of a bow that is smoother to draw than this bow. It just sits in the hand after the shot. The grip is comfortable. I mean, my electrician said to me, he said, oh, maybe I should buy one. He's currently got the current drive, which is the 2020 drive, not the 2021 drive. He said, oh, maybe I should upgrade. And then it's like, well, should you? Like, the old drive is fine. This is better, I think. But then should you just upgrade to the NXT and be done with it? But this is, I think I'll shoot well. We'll see how the results are. But having shot now at the long distances, I would definitely go for a different stabilizer. I'd go for one with more weight. Um, so the dead center, which is, I was, when I did this review, I was like, which stabilizer do I go for? And I chose this because it was cheaper. 
but now I'm like, I wish I chose, chose the dead center. I can add a whole bunch of weight onto it. Sounds like it's going through the wall. I can't, I, you honestly cannot see where they're landing down there at the other end, so. Let's fire this one and see what the grip's like. Actually, I want to shift some more. Because I. That one was pretty close to the middle, I'm pretty sure. Now this vein has two veins on it. Um, a lot of customers would be worried by that. Um, I'm not one of those customers that is worried by it, obviously. Now you see like this one, the veins are a bit chewed up. There. That's because they get shot. Um, so I, sh I shoot these arrows a lot. These are old arrows. And which is one reason why I often don't shoot these in competition because the veins, the pins are just like, I've already, sh in setting up this video, I've already robbed the hooded one arrow. Um, and they just get hammered. Look, this bow's lovely. So let's go down there and see. Look, I'm pretty happy with that. Like it's a, it's that kind of groove at 35 meters with a hunting bow, with a basic, what, have, what did I spend on this kit? $50 ARS, $50 sight, $40 stabilizer. That's it. I get that. And I've got lots of tight arrows. I've got lots of tight arrows touching one another. Um, oh look, I robbed the hooded one, which you probably would have seen in the video. So yeah, one one got hammered at the back end. Now, one of my viewers goes, "That's not a Robin Hood. That's up to you. I call it a Robin Hood." Um, but I acknowledge your point of view. Um, Look, there's a lot of tight arrows there, and I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try dropping that stabilizer down and seeing what looks like is a group. Um, so that's two arrows, I've, two arrows I've Robin Hooded so far uh, in two ends, and that's why my veins get see. Like this one also had only two veins on it. Um, so once again, I don't worry about, like if I shoot in competition at 90 meters or 70 meters and I was serious and I wanted to try and shoot a record, obviously my, my arrows would be, sometimes my arrows are good. Like sometimes I've refletched them and I, they're looking good. But for practicing and what I just do, which is trying to get my shooting up and trying to get my arrow count up and try and execute good shots, I don't worry about this stuff because I'm worried about executing good shots. I'm, Concentrating on shooting a good shot and keeping my form good. So Let's go back again to 35 meters and give this a go with the stabilizer lower. So I'm moving the stabilizer to the lower point um, Now the basis of moving your stabilizers down and having stabilizer angle down It's meant to be like a pendulum. So by moving the weight down it makes you more stable um, Stops you rocking. That's, that's a theory now, personally, I haven't found any difference at all. And there's some professionals who have the weights way down and pointing way down. There's others who move them up and they say it reduces the vibration. So I just find if I do a good shot, it goes in the middle. So that's down lower. But I, one thing I do like about the drive and I do like about the PSE is it gives you the choice. Choice is a good thing. So it enables you to say, well, whether you like it. Now I find this bow, very very nice to shoot and I was 
Uh, now I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to the science. So on the last end, my arrows were a little bit across to the left. So I'm just going to cross. Now this side is $50, um, and it's just micro adjustment. Now I'm not a big fan of micro adjustment. I like micro adjustment, but it's not the be all, be all, and, be all and end all of archery. Okay? Do you need it? Once you've sight set up, it's it's fine. But for an extra 20 bucks to get it, I'm all for that. So, like that just made it, you saw how easy that was for me, because if it didn't have micro adjustment, I'd bump it, and then if it's not enough, I've got to bump it back and bump it. The micro adjustment's really nice. Now on the top of the line, Axel sights, where you got micro adjustment for each pin, like it's nice. It makes it really easy to adjust. It's just I'm paying $350 for it, as opposed to $50. really like the feel of this bow. I feel no vibration at all on the shot. The bow just sits there in my hand. You can see I've got no bow sling. Um, just feels really, really nice to shoot. Happens sometimes with back tension release aid when I'm not paying attention. It doesn't. I shoot tournaments all the time, that never happens to me. Now when you have a bad shot like that, you got to really focus on getting the next one in because you can be a little bit flustered from the shot as I probably was that time. So it's all about getting back to forget about that arrow that missed get back focused to having good shots. Now one of the reasons I like shooting close distance is I can actually see where my arrows land at this distance, I, I get no feedback for myself on whether how that shot was. So one of my friends was a ex-Olympian and he used to shoot long distance all the time for practice. Now his theory was that if you can shoot well at long distance, then you can shoot well at short distance. My thing is I like positive feedback. Um, I like to shoot a good shot, I like to see my arrow go in the middle. Now I can't see it at this distance. I can't see where my arrows are going. So I don't know each shot how it's performed. Obviously the one that hit the tin shed, that didn't perform very well because I didn't hit my anchor point. But the rest of the shots, I, like, I was happy when I went up to see the target. I was like, oh, they're good arrows. But, um, Now I can't really feel the difference between the stabilizer here and up there. Um, now if I want to test this over, this is one arrow with two veins. If I want to test it over time, I'd keep shooting score arrows and see which one I shoot better with consistently. Now this end may not be as good as my last one because I've missed the target and that will kind of just fluster me a bit. I'll lose a bit of confidence. Oh. 
Now what I'd have a lot more confidence in is if I could see where my arrows were landing. I've got a feeling they're hitting on the right side of the target now, so I probably moved it too far to the left, the side. And the reason I can see that is because the target's moving to that side, so... Now I never, <laughs> I never shoot if there's someone in front of me. Because if something happens like that release aid goes off because I wasn't focused completely or my bow breaks and the arrow shoots off, someone could get shot. I kind of feel like, well, saying that is, is obvious. It's not obvious for a whole bunch of people. Um, but like for me, I, You've probably seen me as the target before on videos, but it's very rare uh, for me. Like in a year, in a year, it might happen once. So Let's go down and see where those arrows are because I think they're hitting too far on the right of the target. Well, I can almost fit my hands around those arrows. Now, I thought when I was standing back there shooting this distance, I thought my arrows were all over the place. Um, I don't know where the one, one I missed went, but I thought my arrows were all over the place and I thought it was going to be a bad group. Now that clearly wasn't the case. It was an excellent group. Um, I'm more than happy with that. So overall, how do I rate, rate the drive? I think the drive is very smooth to draw. I think there's no, I think it's very smooth to draw. The draw wall is good. There's very little vibration when you shoot it. The balance of the bow is excellent. I love the adjustability in the draw cycle. The down points are plastic limb pockets, um, which I've never had a problem with, but you know, do you prefer metal? Because it's the better thing, right? Um, how would I rate this to my PSE Supra? Look, I think it rates. I really rate this bow. I, I think this is easy. It's an easier draw cycle than my PSE Supra. Uh, it's got good balance to shoot. I would have no problems shooting this bow for target. Um, like if you gave me, if I put on a scope sight on it and I put on heavy stabilizers, this group here is probably going to shrink from that down to that and that's going to be really, really good. So um, you can see it's too far across to the right. Now that's the micro adjustment. So when I did the micro adjustment, I moved too far. But what's really good about it is you can just go click, click and go back. And that's what I love about the micro adjustment. That's one reason why I went up to the $50 site from the $30 site. Because with the $30 site, it's bump, 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 micro adjustment, click, click. So all up. Um, now I've been asked about the Embark from PSE a whole, by a whole bunch of people. When are they going to come in? When are you going to do a review on them? Look, to me, the Embark is the dryer, is the 31 inch drive, which is always a good bow. It was always a good bow. And, but when I've got the 33 inch drive at the same price or cheaper, 33 inch is easy to shoot. I'm just like, now there might be some hunters who prefer the 31 inch, but I'm gonna say the 33 inch drive is the bow I would choose. Now I haven't seen the Embark, so there might be some features on it you prefer. Um, but at the moment, I just think this bow is so good at its price point, I'm struggling to find another bow at that price point this good. And even rating against the $1,400 bows, I think this bow still rates because it's smooth, easy to shoot, forgiving, just easy. Easy is good, dependable is good. Um, I love the yokes, how you can twist them up on one side versus the other, I love that. Um, like I said, it's going to be a little bit harder to fit a new set of strings to. Then the strings are easy to make, then the five-piece string set, and cheaper. 
So overall, we we'll really like the PSC drive. Um, and when you're looking to buy one, give it some thought on whether you want to go for a better site, you know, a $50 site versus a $30 site. Drop away rest versus a biscuit rest. Um, the peep side I was happy with. I had no rotation on that string at all. So the strings are very good on the drive. Um, but overall, really, really good bow. And for everyone, all the best for 2021 in the new year. Thanks for watching. Bye.